So what we're going to do today is we're going to launch a business, okay? And I want you to be able to follow step-by-step step along with me whenever you do get ready to start your business. Now, I am in South Carolina, so of course, I am going to be using the South Carolina website. However, um, you're going if you've already received the free download, you are going to be able to find everything that you need uh, as far as websites to be able to do the same thing that's in your state. Now, this is perfect timing because we have to create another company uh, to do some work. And so I'm going to go ahead because I haven't done that yet. And I'm going to go ahead and do that with you all on today. Okay, so and I'm going to make it easy um, for this one as if I was setting it up just for myself, owned by myself, et cetera. So what we're going to do is I'm going to share my screen. All right, so this is what it looks like, and we are going to go to the one for South Carolina because we look, need to look to see if our business name is available, and then we're going to fill out the business application. Um, we're going to look for our state ID application, which I, and then the licensing permits. This video right now, and because I don't know how I want to actually lay this out, but for right now, what we're going to do and what we're going to focus on is actually checking to see if our name is available and then filling out the paperwork on the South Carolina Business One Stop. All right, so first thing is first, we are going to copy this and we're going to go here and we're going to click that. All right, so it brings us here and this is the South Carolina Business One Stop uh, site. Move that over here. And then it says new business, existing business, document request, agent search, uh, paper forms. So once you get your business set up, you can come out here and you can request your documents. You can search existing entities. Uh, so I'll search one of these companies that I have. And you click search. So you'll know what actually shows up. So here's a company that I created. Uh, it's a limited liability company. It says it's in good standing. You can click on it. And once you click on it, it's going to give you some additional information. So it shows you uh, my name and then the address of where I actually um, use it as a registered agent. And then it's got your articles of incorporation. And then I can request documents if I wanted to actually retrieve those articles of organization. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back home and then we're going to do for new business, we're going to do start a new business filing. And the first thing you got to do is you've got to see if the name is available. So the company that I'm trying to start today is called Kairos Clinical Services. And then we click search. And it says this name is available. So no one in South Carolina has this name. Now, it's very important because just because it's not taken in South Carolina, you still may want to see if it's taken someplace else. Not necessarily that you can't register it, but I usually always like to go to Google and type in the company name and see what comes up. And so we've got Tyros Health Systems, which is senior living consultants. We've got some mental health stuff. Um, so nothing, nothing major. Um, and the reason you do that is because just because it's available in, in your state, you want to make sure that you're not using a name that's already maybe attached to something that's very popular or something that's negative. And then they get your company confused with that company. Um, don't think of, oh, I'm only going to be in my state. So I'm not going to worry about if it's affecting me anyplace else, because I want you to think long term. And I want you to think that growth and scale. So you where you are now may not be where you're going to be 10 years from now. And so that's why I want you to just go out here and look. You can even go under images and see what all comes up when you do that. And we'll just look and see nothing, nothing major there. Um, one of the reasons why I use the word Cairo. So if you're trying to name your company, you can actually... It's Greek. And so if you go to Kairos meaning, it'll pop all this stuff up. And Kairos is Greek for right time, season, or opportunity. So it refers to the timeliness of an argument. So often for an ad or an argument to be successful, it needs to appropriate tone and structure, come to a right time, all this kind of stuff. But I like this one better. Um, what's the biblical meaning of Kairos, the appointed time and the purpose of God. Um, and so 
that's one of the reasons why I'm choosing this. I already knew that this is the name that I was going to choose. And so when you're trying to name your business, try to think of things that maybe in another language mean something else um, or something that you're trying to portray, because you can also use it as a talking piece. Um, and so just be thinking about how you actually want to name your company. And um, we'll, we'll talk about that in another video also, or another segment of a video. All right, so we're going to go with this one. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add a new entity. And what you have to do is you're going to have to um, log in, okay? And so if you've never created one before, you're going to have to register. All right, and so now it says it sent me an email. So I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to look through my email and find it. And basically, it shows up like this. It just says, Cyclone Secretary of State Mark Hammond, um, Business Entities Online, thank you for registering. To complete your registration, access your account, please use the link below. So I'll click the link. And when I click the link, it's got my registration is confirmed. So let's go ahead and click continue. Okay, so now I've logged in and now it wants me to complete security questions. So question number one, you can just pick any of these things that you want um, to actually pick. So I'm going to pick these questions, but I'm going to stop sharing while I do that. Okay. So it says account security questions are now set up. So then you're going to click continue. Um, and then from here, you're going to go start a new business filing. And then we already know what the name of the company is that we want it. And we're going to click search. This name is available. So now we're going to add new entity. And now it's going to tell you and ask you about the pricing and all that kind of stuff. So it says, choose a business type to see a list of forms. All right. And then it says, is it a South Carolina entity? It is going to be a South Carolina entity. So I'm going to choose yes. We will talk about foreign later. Uh, so that's whenever you're originating in one state, but you want to do business in another state. You may have to register your business with that state. And that's called foreign filing in another state. But um, because this is going to be a South Carolina entity, I'm going to do yes, domestic. Uh, choose a business type. So this is where you're going to choose whether you're a corporation, LLC, limited liability partnership, limited partnership, nonprofit, um, benefit corporation, reservation or registration. I am going to create this one as a limited liability company. Um, if it, And we'll go over it. We'll break down what all of these mean. So you make sure that you're picking the right one. I will have a disclaimer. However, what I am going to show you is what I have done in the past, how I have set up businesses, what advice I got from my accountant um, and folks when setting these things up. I encourage you to do the same um, so that you know the ins and outs of each one of these, what's going to work best for your business and how you should actually set it up. However, um, this is what I know I need to do for this one. So I'm choosing limited liability company. And then it has the available form. So it's got articles of organization that we're going to have to have. And then it says partnership to LLC conversion. We're not doing a, doing that. We're doing the articles of organization that is required under the state of South Carolina laws in order to organize an LLC. You have to have articles of organization. And so we're going to do start filing for that, but we're just going to go start filing. And then what you're going to have to do here is you're going to have to fill out this part and so what this part here is, is who's going to be the contact uh, for, for the account. So I'm going to fill all of this in. And while I fill that in with my personal information. Okay, so I just put in my um, information, my uh, personal information. And now it's saying it does not include the right corporate ent ending. And so whenever you're creating an LLC, you're going to have to put in the LLC on the end of it. And so we do comma LLC. And so here's everything here that, you, oh shoot, it's gone now, but it's just telling you what endings would have to be there. So because I'm creating this as an LLC, that's what I'm putting there. And here you go. The name of the limited liability company must contain one of the following entities. And it's got uh, limited liability company, limited company, or any of these abbreviations. Now, under agent name, it says must be different from entity name. I am the registered agent. And so over here, you can put, it says enter the initial registered agent's name and office address for the LLC. So that's exactly what I'm going to put there. So I'm going to put the office address. So I'm going to go do that and my name. 
All right, so that's that. And then it says initial designated office. Enter the address of the initial designated office in the limited liability company. Now I'm using our office address at uh, PSIN. And so if you're a home-based business, you do not have an office yet, then you can put in your home address. Um, notice some of these can be a PO box, some of these cannot. So your agent information here, this cannot be a PO box, okay? So you can't put a PO box there. You're gonna have to use your home address or you're gonna have to use use your office address. Down here under initial designated office, um, it's the same. So I'm just going to type the same thing in. Okay. And then it's talking about managers. It says indicate whether management of the limited liability company is vested in a manager or managers. And so we're going to say yes. And then I'm also going to be the manager name. And we will talk about this. Um, we will talk about this later. Okay, so 401 Western Lane, Suite F, Irmo, South Carolina 29063, all of that's there. Um, and we're only going to have one manager. Okay, and if you had an additional manager, you would click add there, but I'm only going to do one. And then it says members liable for its debts not required. I never check anything that's not required. If it's not required, I'm not putting anything in there. So all of this stuff is not required. So I'm skipping over all of it. And then it says registering your LLC name does not in and of itself provide an exclusive right to use the name on or in connection with any product or service, use of a name or trademark service um, for further clearance. So all of this stuff is just telling you about trademarks. Again, if you took somebody else's name that they're using someplace else and they have a trademark, um, then this is the warning that's telling you that. Um, and then there's some other legal ease that you need to read down here. All right, and then organizers, only one organizer is required, but you may have more than one. So again, I'm just gonna put myself. Who is signing this form? That is going to be an organizer. So if you have somebody that is doing this for you, then that person will be put in filer. And then it says, I understand uh, the undersi undersigned. I'm typing my own name as an electronic signature and verify that I am present during the filing of this document. So I'm gonna include that. And then I'm going to type in my name. Okay, so a couple of things on this particular form here. So this is the electronic version of it creating your articles of organization for you, okay? And that's why it's asking you to put these things in. Um, if you have, we'll talk about the manager's piece of it. And again, I don't put anything if it's not required. And then we have who the organizer is and if you're an organizer or the filer, and then you're going to sign your name. If you had a uh, business where, say I wanted my main business to actually own this business, then this would look uh, different. Um, but because that's not how I am setting this up, um, and most of you won't set this up that way either, because I'm trying to make this as a like an entry level on if you are an entrepreneur and you're trying to start a business, we wanna make this as least as complicated as possible so that you can actually go ahead and get your LLC started. And then you click save and continue. And now it says summary of forms. Okay. So you could, it'll show you your, if you want to go back and look at this stuff, you can do that. Um, you can edit it if you need to. We're good to go. Um, this CL1, so this is the initial annual report of corporations. Because we're not a corporation, we do not have to fill this out. Now, we will talk about LLCs with an S-Corp status. I am not going to do that with this business. Okay, so contact info, articles of incorporation is going to cost me $110. So we're going to click save and continue. And then it says document request options. This is optional again. So if this filing is approved, you will automatically receive non-certified copies of the documents for this filing of your records at no additional charge. However, if you want to purchase certified copies, then you're going to have to select the ones that you want. This is optional and you can request it at another time. Okay. And if they do, they'll just go ahead and deliver um, uh, them via email. I always want the official documents. And again, because I'm thinking into the future and if there's things I know for my real estate business, when I had it, I had to present the uh, certified certificate of existence for some of the hard money lenders and the articles of, uh, articles of the organization. So if that is the case, I always just go ahead and want to be prepared. If you are not financially prepared uh, to pay for those uh, right now, 
then that is fine. You can see the document request per document. First page is $3, each additional is 50 cents. Um, and so it'll give me a, a price on the next page. However, if you do have the, the money, I tell you to just go ahead and pay for it now. And then you're going to click continue. And then we're looking on here. So it's saying the articles is 110, service fees $15, $10 for the certificate, another $4 uh, fee here. And then we've got $4 for the certified document and then another $2.50. So it's only cost me like $14 to get those official copies. So the total cost is going to be $145.50 to set up this business. And so then we're going to go to save and check out. And now it's asking for payment. So it's submitting, I submitted the payment and now it's saying uh, credit card went through, transaction complete, your filing has been submitted for approval. All right, I'm gonna tell you right now, you're going to print this page. Okay, go ahead and print this page. And then I'm gonna also tell you that you're going to um, save it. We're going to have a module where I show you how to tips for organization so that you can save these things and have all of your stuff organized so you know where things are. Okay, so that's all of that. And then you can click continue and that's that. Now I'm gonna go and check my email to see if I've gotten anything. And so what I have received from them says, um, thank you for your filing submission. Your filing uh, has been submitted for approval. You will receive an email when it has been reviewed. Please note that a hold may be placed on your account for the amount of the filing until it's reviewed by the Cyclone Secretary of State's office. Um, so that's what the email is saying. So we'll keep an eye out. So once that is approved, we will actually receive our certificate of existence and everything um, to our email. So uh, that part of setup is easy. And I know you probably have um, seen and heard people that charge folks just to do that piece of it. Um, I hope that you can see that you don't necessarily have to charge somebody or pay somebody to set that up for you. That was fairly easy. Um, I think if you know what you're doing and you've got a video, hopefully like this right here to guide you through it. Now, what I do wanna do is I'm going to pull up a couple of other states, and this is off the fly because I have not uh, done this before in another uh, another state. So let's see what we got. I'm gonna share my screen again. Okay, so here's the screen that I'm sharing over here, and let's pick um, let's pick Delaware. So we're just gonna hit Control V, and we're gonna go to Delaware, and we're gonna see what pops up. So it says, "Welcome to Delaware, one stop." Uh, create an account to begin your business license registration or renew your existing existing business license. Uh, so looks like the same thing. You're going to have to create an account. Um, it also tells you, and all these states usually have some type of uh, thing. So learning uh, what all that stuff's about. So if you go in here and get started, it says first you're going to need a legal structure and name. And then it talks about the various types and the variety of types um, of legal structure entities that you can have. And this one right here is pretty cool. So it gives you that and all the fees. Um, the other thing it says is, so first you'll need to uh, the legal structure and name. Then you're going to register your business and then find out if you need a federal EIN number and then determine if you should get other state of Delaware licenses and registrations. So you're going to click, let's see, checklist of professions and industries. Um, let's say, yeah, let's say, you are doing a general business license. Um, and we click general business license and it says all businesses operating in Delaware need a business license from the Division of Revenue. Uh, so this is where you would go and you would find everything you needed to do so for Delaware. Um, the other thing they've got, oh, so that's number two. And then it says, uh, finally obtain local license certifications or registration. So it's giving you all these step-by-step -step things that you can do to try and figure out how do you uh, do your, start your business. And then there's the registration piece license. And, and then if you're going to hire employees, um, you're going to have to register. And that's not just for Delaware, that's everywhere, but that's going to be in a different video right now. So I want you to get your business set up, uh, whether it's going to be an LLC partnership, um, anything, or I just want you to get that set up. So let's find another one. Let's go to our sister state, North Carolina. So let's see what we've got for North Carolina. Um, mm, mm, well, 
how do I start? There it is, my business. So let's go there. And here we go. Step by step. How do I start my business? Register your business. The way your business is structured affects taxation, legal, and financial responsibility. So you click that and let's see what comes up. For entrepreneurs to small businesses, our team of small business advisors connects clients with information they need from state and local people. So this just has some um, business planning checklists. So it has some good information out here. You're deciding on a business structure. So if we did learn more here, let's see what comes up. Um, so sole proprietorship, and it's saying a sole proprietorship is a business that is owned and operated by an individual. So that's just one person um, that is owning this business. Now, you may say, well, Renarda, you just set up a business. Why didn't you choose sole proprietorship? And the reason I didn't choose sole proprietorship is because of the taxation piece uh, that's with it. And so that's why I'm not doing it. It says the owner is personally and legally responsible for his or her actions. All profit or loss from a sole proprietorship belongs to the owner. So so that is the main reason why I do not have any of my businesses set up at sole proprietorship is because I always want my business separated from my personal and shielded as much as possible. Then you have a general partnership that's formed by two or more people who agree to contribute money, labor, and a skill to the business. Um, all partners typically are held legally responsible for their own actions to file your sole proprietorship or general partnership names. Then it's telling you what you have to do. Um, now, I do have business partners in my other business, but we are not set up a gen as a general partner. Partnership. We're actually set up as a corporation. We're set up as an S Corp uh, from the beginning. Uh, so we did not, for that particular business, we did not do LLC with S Corp status. We actually did that business and set it up as a corporation. Okay. And then, so just because you have partners do not mean you have to have a general partnership. And then limited liability company is legally distinct and separate from its owners. That is the reason why I did not set up anything as sole proprietorship. Again, like I said, I want to separate my business from my personal. So LLC allows me to legally dis distinguish myself from the owners. Um, it offers its owners both limited personal liability and actions of the business and special tax treatment. There's the other reason. Uh, why we did it that may prevent what has been called double taxation of the owner's income. And we'll get into that. And then to register for it, it tells you how to register there. And then you got a C Corp. We I have never had a C Corp. Um, so I cannot tell you anything about a C Corp other than I know it uh, it has certain things with uh, distributions, dividends, and shareholders. That is not my area of expertise. Um, I have never set up a C Corp. I cannot tell you um, if one is better than the other. Uh, I do know that when we set up our business, we were advised that S Corp was the way to go. Um, I do not remember why. Uh, I think it had something to do with size, maybe. I don't know. Um, but it wasn't beneficial for us to do it as a C Corp. So we are a uh, S Corp um, for my main business. And then you got nonprofit. Here's the S Corp. So an S Corporation is a corporation of LLC that has elected a tax status with the IRS. And, all right. So it's basically saying that these uh, elect to pass corporate income, losses, deductions, and credits through to their shareholders uh, for federal tax purposes. Uh, they report through full flow through of income and losses on their personal tax returns and are assessed at their individual tax rates. We will go into that because I do have experience with it. Uh, so basically what it's saying is whatever monies the S Corp makes, is, the money is then going to flow back to the owners. The profit is going to flow back to the owners um, on what we call a K-1 statement. So we will definitely get into that. Uh, and then it says this allows S Corps to avoid double taxation on their corporate income. We will talk about it because I am familiar with that. But again, as a disclaimer, you need to talk with a tax advisor about what is going to be best for you. This right here is just me telling you how we have our things set up and how we run things. But you're going to have to get legal advice and tax advice from somebody else. What I can tell you because I have done this before too, I set up a business entity wrong. Um, I, it was a one business was supposed to own the other business and I set that up incorrectly. I did ask someone how to set it up, 
Um, and that person guided me wrong. So, um, and it was somebody new. It, it was a, 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 and so what I am going to tell you is make sure who you're getting the advice from makes sense. And some of this stuff you can do, you can do research on yourself. You can do research on that company. So I do advise you if you, if you can read enough and then say, well, that doesn't really make sense. Ask questions. Okay. Uh, read reviews uh, because I did set that up wrong. Now, the cool thing was it was a lot for the new accountant to actually get it fixed, but it did get fixed. So um, don't let fear of all these terms and all this kind of stuff scare you uh, from getting started. The main thing is get started. Okay. Um, and let's see. And then they got some small business advisors. So that's all of that stuff. And then we'll do one more. Let's do, I've set a business up in Georgia before for somebody. So let's find, um, let's see New York. Let's see what New York has. All right. So New York, register to vote, apply for SNAP. We don't want to do any of that. Uh, we don't want to do none of that. All right, let's see. Do they have a I want to on here? Yeah, they got a search box. Let's see what's under services. Okay, we're business, so we want to do that. And here we go. Start a limited liability company. So here is how you would do that. All right. So what I hope you're finding is the resource guide. Um, let's see if we can, well, let's look for another one. Let's do Montana. Um, just this will be the last one because what I'm hoping you're picking up is the link is going to take you to um, the .gov page, which is where all the stuff is going to be set up for that state. You're going to find a whole bunch of other stuff out there, but what you're looking for is the business sections and see you're looking for business filing portal is what this one right here is going to be called. You can register a business. The cool thing though, however, by going to this broad site is you're not limited to finding out the education uh, for the businesses. So you're going to want to save and keep these documents because this is where you're going to be going back to once your, your business is set up. Because see, look over here. If you need to request certificates or copies, this is where you're going to have to go. If you're going to look for somebody, then you got to go here. So that's why you want to keep this broad um, website so that you can go on there and find everything that you need. So this one, you will just go to register a business. It takes you someplace else and it's got everything out here that you're going to need. All right. <laughs> So hopefully that was helpful. What we have covered so far and is how do you actually set up your LLC? And so that's what we've done. That is step one that I, and I now know once I've, since I finished recording this video, I am not going to just make this one super long uh, video. I am going to just break it up into different sections. And so this section was get your LLC started. So if you are a business um, an entrepreneur trying to start a business and you want to just set up the LLC, this is the video for you. All you have to do is set up the video. So next, what we need to do is we need to set up our EIN. Okay. So you probably saying, well, Renata, why aren't we doing the state licenses and stuff like that? We're going to get to that. Okay. But right now, what we want to do is we need an EIN number because EIN numbers are going to feed into our banking, our QuickBooks setup, and all that kind of stuff. So first thing, we set up the business entity. The second thing is we're going to go and we're going to get us an EIN number. So if you finish watching this video and you want to go to the next one in the series, you're going to want to go to the EIN video.